right, you primitive screwheads. Listen up. Hey, this is the Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 269. I'm Brandon. I'm here with Ryan. We're going to kick off the arc of the hell of a Halloween by talking about a deck that takes us back to medieval Europe. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? Whole ton is going down. We've started a brand new arc for the month of October, celebrating everybody's favorite national holiday. Which is Halloween, right? Sure. Everybody seems to like Halloween, at least around spooky season. Yes. We got some people to thank, some stories to tell, some gameplay we wanted to talk about a little bit. But before we get to any of that, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all your gaming needs. Very much so. And, and currently right now sitting in my shopping cart at FusionGamingOnline.com is a slow gurk. Dang. Yeah, the deck from last week, of course. CCO Fusion 5 will get you 5% off your entire order. See, see, <coughs> oh, I'm coughing. So you go there, use the promo code to let the boys at Fusion, let everybody at Fusion know that the boys at CCO sent you, and it's a good deal for everybody. It, it is. That's a good it deal. Is. I mean, I mean, and you save like what? How much is Slogurk? You save like 0.5 of a cent? <laughs> <laughs> this set's worthless. <coughs> you this have a Renin 7? No? Get the uh, fuck out of here uh, yeah yeah the set doesn't have very much but we are featuring some cards from the new set yes yeah, blowing my mind Mid- right now midnight hunt we are featuring some cards from undead unleashed pre-con i learned that that's the name of the pre-con <laughs> because if anybody knows what the names of the pre-cons are why do they even name them it's the one with the Oxide Extortionist. It's the Demir one. It's the Grixis one. It's the cat one. It's the cat one, yeah. It's the dragon one. What are the yeah. names of them? It doesn't matter. The The question was rhetoric and also irrelevant. Today... Feline Ferocity, that's the name of one. Y- yes, and yep. I think maybe Draconic Dominance is one. Ooh, alliteration. Yes, we yeah. know nothing about alliteration here at CCO Podcast. No, definitely on Commander Cookout during the arc of hell of a Halloween. Yes, I was going to call it the spooky Halloween arc, (laughs) but you beat me to the punch. That was the working title. And today we are talking about my boy, the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Lord of Tressorhorn. Lord of Tressorhorn, the 10-4 regenerating legend. I think he's a zombie now, right? He's a zombie. He's a zombie now for Grixis and Juan comes into play. Somebody, what is he? They draw a card. Two cards. Draw two cards, gain two life. I got you. You know what he does. Red, blue, black, one, ten, four, enters the battlefield. Zombie, like you say, enters the battlefield. An opponent draws two cards. Mm -hmm. We sacrifice a creature. Mm -hmm. We lose two life. Regenerate for a black, which people always underestimate, and it's actually good. Yeah. So here's the thing. (coughs) Sorry, I got a, I got a scratchy Post, throat. Post nasal drip. There it is, Brando's phrase of the day. Yeah, I'm a doctor, and I learned a thing. Yo, yeah, well, everybody's a doctor online. You just Google whatever's wrong with you. Oh, guarantee you have cancer if you Google something <laughs> online. <laughs> That's how it works. But we're doing Lord of Tressorhorn because yesterday, October fourth, my mom's birthday, oh, yeah. is actually Lord of Tressorhorn Day. Because it's ten four. Ten four. It's the only ten four in all of Magic. Like September fifth or whatever is Yargle Day. October fourth oh. is Lord of Tressorhorn Day. Okay. So, f- fan of the show, CCO Nationalite, Patreon supporter, all around totally medium, probably guy. Yeah. Chris Purcell. You might remember him by the nickname Coin Purcell. <laughs> Chris Coin Purse oh. <laughs> sends the deck in and says, "I know I got Ryan with the tagline Lord of Tressorhorn Day. Do this deck. How am I gonna How am I gonna get Brando? What's the hook, line, and sinker to get Brando? I'm way more difficult. So, you gotta yeah. put a you gotta put a what is it a brash taunter in the deck? Well, here's the thing. Why doesn't Why doesn't this deck have a brash taunter in it? The deck could have brash taunter. Maybe that's one of your suggestions." Like it always is. The theme of the deck is the Evil Dead. That's a cool show, yeah. I, I want to say Evil Dead movie franchise because there's more than one and I didn't know that. So why don't you give us the skinny on Evil Dead really quick. Super fast Evil Dead. Bunch of guys who are friends rent a cabin in the woods. They go to it. Ghost in the woods fucking kills them all. Our boy Ash, played by Bruce Campbell, tries to 
like gets infected, saws his own arm off with a chainsaw, gets sucked through a time portal, goes on an adventure with King Arthur and Merlin, kills an evil version of himself, swallows his own clone, throws dirt into his face, shoots a thing in the face with a shotgun, saves the day, goes back to his job in a department store. Whoa. Mm. That's what the movie's about. That's what happens. That's like two movies. And now we're doing a deck about it. And in the soulless remake, it ends with, like, it's raining blood and actual, like, Satan's walking around. And a lady gets a jeep flipped over onto her arm and she has to, like, pull it until her arm comes off. And it's bullshit. So (laughs) so just avoid that one entirely. I spoiled the ending for you on purpose. Just watch Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. You'll enjoy them. Everybody seems to. Cool. Mm -hmm. It's hard to watch it and not have fun. Maybe we'll have to watch it one day. Yeah. Okay. I'd be down. Okay. Well, the deck is based on that (laughs) all, and Chris sent it in, so big thanks to him. If you want to have your spooky Halloween deck featured all month, all the way up until Halloween, you send them in either to the Preferred Deck List channel on the Patreon Discord. If you're there, it's one of the benefits. Mm -hmm. If, If you're not... If, if you don't have access to that channel, you could submit them to either the casual deck list channel or the competitive one if you got a spooky competitive deck. It's, it's a, well, I guess it could be a boogie mander. A boogie mander, yeah. Boogie you man could, is you, scary, right? You could check out the CCO top five and five boogie mander to, yeah, uh, to, yeah, to yeah. learn about what that is. Uh, I'll, I'll put a, a link to it in the, in the, on the cards oh. if you're watching on YouTube, which you. Should be because it's really good, especially this one because there's going to be pictures. Yes, yes there's going to be our, Joe Mama, editor in chief for CCO Podcast, is going to do a little bit of extra heavy lifting, more so than he normally does, <laughs> to add some pictures and and make it fun for everybody who's watched on YouTube because we super appreciate uh, everybody who's who's subbed and who's been here and and all the all the jazz. The whole thing about your holes. We'll get to it at the end of the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I mentioned Slogurk. We got to give a pack away because somebody guessed that. Oh yeah. I mentioned Patron. We're going to get to a nickname. Uh-huh. What what do you want to do first? Ooh, I want to do quick stories from EDH and M real oh, fast. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Real fast cuz we had a game zero situation. Ooh. That happened. Remember we talk about game zero here on the show more than the now fetishized and legal knowledge turn zero conversation mm. where you just fucking play a game with somebody and it was not balanced this game like it was <laughs> this is why people have yeah. the rule zero conversation i was playing my hepatra deck which i recently added 19 new cards to Ooh. so like i don't know if the fucking deck works anymore and then it does spoiler it does Ugh. and alex was playing i don't i don't even know what the hell he was trying to do but he didn't get a whole lot going on and uh five color mono white angel aaron was playing his uh Darien, King of Keldor deck, yep. which is fine. And brother Mon- rolls up. Mono white. <laughs> he's like, yo, can I jump all up in here and play a game with you guys? Like, oh, yeah, that sure. was the guy that when I walked up and, and he had he had the he had the force of will in his graveyard and I, I called him out, I see that you're playing Force yeah. of Will and Mana Crypt in this totally casual yeah. competitive game. And it was a is it stacks deck. Oh. Just like fully like all the way tweaked to the nuts, had the whole thing. We had to gang up on him. We ganked him the first game. <laughs> and then the second game, he did the the standard any stacks deck that plays blue play of ramping out of control, slow us down somehow, Cyclonic Rift the table, and then we all just scooped because yeah. the the value is too much for us to, to get over. Yep. Still good games, though. He's a good dude to play with. Oh, that's... And both of the games were fun in spite of the fact that his deck vastly outperformed all of ours. Oh, 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 I got this. I got your back. I got this. Yeah. You mean you could have accidentally had a power mismatch at the table. Yep. And you talk about it and yep. ganked him and he fucking knew. Yeah, he, he, he knew why he was getting ganks playing oh, yeah. stacks at a casual table. Absolutely. And you still had a good time. Yeah. And you were still cordial and nobody scooped or got butt hurt. No. You're just a bunch of people having f- fun and, and playing magic. Weird. What the fuck? Right? What in the actual? Yeah, it's totally possible, it turns out. So I, I got one. I got one for you. I got a game story. Tell me. I got this. Tell me. So we're playing we're we're playing the EDHs at, at EDH and M. What? That's ED8 Night Magic for all the, the new listeners. Mm-hmm. Playing the EDHs. Okay. And I'm playing Bruvac Mill. Oh shit. And I got me a counter spell. <laughs> or equivalent. Sure. Something that's gonna stop the open the vaults from going off. Ooh. And I didn't. I let her go. I let it resolve. 
What? It was the biggest open the vaults, and I'm playing Mill, remember? <laughs> I'm playing Mill, and I had a brew vac out, and I had the, the blue, 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 each player mills 14. Oh, yeah. But it was doubled, so each player mills 28, and I've already brew vac petitioned a guy down to like 10 cards. Oh, shit. Open the vaults goes off, and... It's fucking mayhem. <laughs> like, <laughs> everybody didn't have playmats anymore because cards were on them. <laughs> and it took about 15 minutes to get it all done. And uh, George, one of the guys that was playing my deck, it was my Alenda deck. Right. And he got everything back and he couldn't quite put the combo together because he actually got an enchantment back that says whenever you have a creature die, lose the life draw card. Mm -hmm. He's at like 60 life, but he only has three cards left in his library now. Oh. So he can't actually do the sacrifice infinite token combo in there because he's going to draw his old deck. <laughs> he can only do it three times. But one of the dudes that was playing actually stole my rune crab off the top of my library. Oh, shit. Uh, with stolen strategy. Mm -hmm. And he had a, like a fetch land or a train generator in his hand. So he put a, uh, a mountain into play and milled us all for three. Oh. So George had zero cards left in his deck, and he had draw card, draw card, draw card, draw card on the stack, but he found a way to still sacrifice and drain us with anointed procession, giving him tokens every time he had creatures enter the battlefield and, and uh, Massacre Worm to kill our stuff. And he kept sacrificing Massacre Worm and getting a token back of it. <laughs> with a draw card piling up on the stack, and he was just resolving the, the aristocrat trigger. <laughs> so he actually got us. And he had zero <laughs> cards left in library. And all I needed to do, all we needed to do was just, like, counter one activated ability. So he would have to resolve a card draw, then he would have lost. <laughs> oh, man. But I let the open the armories resolve just to see if I could divert attention away from me so I could... Maddening cacophony somebody the next <laughs> turn. Oh, it was great. It was great. Great great times at EDH&M. Those, those are the kinds of things you like to hear. Yes, and that's what you'll get if you want to shack up and be partners with us when we oh, go yeah. to Magic, uh, Magic Fest Vegas. But it's not. It's MTG Vegas. That's, that's getting put on the 19th to 21st of November. Sure. If you're interested in playing games with us, we're really trying to be there. Flights for us are affordable because not very many people are flying right now. Mm-hmm. And we are looking to split an Airbnb a couple ways. So if you're in the mm -hmm. nation and you're a good person, get at us. CommanderCookout at gmail.com, at CCO Podcast, or? Uh, CCO Brando. Uh, on Twitter. On that's, Twitter, yeah. That's how you do Although, it. Although, I'm going to be totally honest with everybody out there. Mm -hmm. If you're talking logistics or planning <laughs> or dates or times. Just get after me. Go to Ryan. I got you back. I will definitely be excited and I will... Be very glad that you want to come or that you're going to be there. And then I will immediately forget. <laughs> so I need you to, if you want to come, Ryan. Yeah. But yeah. let me know too so that and, I can be excited. And you know what? There has been some interest both locally and and on the, the Patreon Discord and on Twitter. Oh, There's sick. been some interest to, to see if we can either be in the same hotel as other people or find an Airbnb close to the convention center. It's a ton of fun. That penthouse we had last time was awesome. The penthouse is good, yes. I don't know if we have that much interest this time, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, here's the thing. We mentioned the, the giveaway. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So we give a pack away when you guess a commander that we're hinting at on the pre-show. Yes. I wonder how many people got Lord of Tressorhorn. Probably fucking everybody. Probably everybody. Honestly, yeah. they always get it. Last week, the guesser of Slow Girk, the Over Slime, mm -hmm. or Fast Girk, as we call him, yeah. Yes. Randy Williams. Completely normal name. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Yeah. So get at us at CCO Podcast or Commander Cooker at gmail.com. Claim your pack. Yeah. Yes, and we'll get that sent out. We got a Patreon nickname. You know what we should be doing? I just thought of this for the pack. We should be rewarding people by not sending them Midnight Hunt packs. <laughs> it's, yes. It's like, hey, here's a Gate Crash pack. They, oh. they send it back with oh. like a piece of shit in it. Oh. Right? Like Gate Crash. Is, is Midnight Hunt going to turn into Gate Crash? I, I, I no, don't, I don't has, think so because it has good cards. It in has it. Innistrad stapled to it. So people will. Yeah. Also, like apparently, the gift box. The fat pack gift box has a glow in the dark D twenty, neat, it, which is cool. Yeah, I yeah, it would look like the moon. Yeah, that's it, probably what they meant. That's really neat. So 
kudos to Wizards for using the glow in the dark gimmick. I love shit that glows in the dark. Yeah, it's like 1993 again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite year. It's 93. like the time I had Scare Glow. He's a He-Man action figure, huh? and I, you know, you charge him up by holding him up to a light, yep. and then you go. And I was like, well, I want him to glow really bright, so I just put him right on the light bulb in the lamp and just like left him there for a little <laughs> while, and it melted like a big crater <laughs> in his back. <laughs> Fuck, but damn, did he glow, baby. He, <laughs> he was looked like a Ram Man fucking <laughs> smashed into his back. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like he was doing doggy style with Ram Man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, I got, I got my dad to make him a little cape so oh, that yeah. it would cover. Because, I mean, he had a cape anyway, but I lost mine, of course, because I'm a kid. So I got dad to make me one so then it covered <laughs> his thing. And then when Skeletor was mad at him, he'd blast him with lightning and then his cape would flip up and he had a burn hole on his back. <laughs> I use it as a play gimmick. There it is. It's imagination, baby. Yeah, that's it. We have a patron to thank. All right, all right. And all right. and a nickname to give because this patron signed up with a, a pseudonym. And you know what we do with pseudonyms? We give him a real ass yeah, name. Yeah, we dump all over his real name. Yeah. We we uh we, we know his real name, but we're going to use the pseudonym and give him a fucking new real name. I don't know his real name. You know his real name. I don't know shit. So here's the thing. Name. Benefit to becoming a patron. Nickname that he gave us, pseudonym, is High Fives. That's not even a name. That's like a thing. Yeah. That's a verb. Is it a verb? Uh, high five is a verb. I. An, is it? Yeah. Yes, to high five is, yeah. is an action. Yeah. yeah. I suppose that would be verbiage. Yeah. If we weren't sitting so close to each other, we'd do the uh, the Johnny Gargano, like, no look, high five. Don't look at me. High five me. Uh, again, I'm not that flexible. Yeah. There, there it is. There we go. That was sweet. High five nickname. Oh, uh, Johnny Gargano. Johnny n- not Gargano. Johnny small Gano. There it is. Small Gano. Johnny Small Gano. <laughs> yeah, very good. I, I like it. Yeah, I love that guy. I should be wearing my Johnny Gargano shirt. I'm wearing my big Earth shirt, which oh, you'd yeah. know if you're looking on YouTube. Yeah, there it is. So, okay, we've we've thanked the patrons. Oh, I, we should say Johnny Small Gano. Yep. Big F you. F you, buddy. You yeah. got finger blasted in the Discord already. Good. One of the finger blastings, one of the, one of the gifts or emojis, I guess, mm-hmm. is the dude from Evil Dead. And I never knew that there were so many references to Evil Dead in, like, internet culture. Oh, yeah, there's so much. So, I guess we've got 87 different custom categories, <laughs> thanks to... Chris. Look at Chris Coin Purse's name on yeah, Architect. Chris Coin Purse. Very oh. excellent. Oh. We've got it all split up, so you know what the things are that we're going to be referencing. And Joel will have it on the screen, and it's going to be a ton of fun. Yeah, this is going to be a good deck. I'm excited for this one. It's it's close enough to yours that it is easy for us to talk about because you know what it does, but it's unique and it's its own thing in that it is a theme deck and also good. And, and? if that wasn't enough, it's also a upgrade to a currently and easily available pre-con you can pick up. Oh, I like that. So, now, here's, here's the thing. We'll have links to, maybe we'll have links to my deck because people ask me about my Lordy T. Yep. The fucking Lord. Uh-huh. They ask for that all the time. Sure. We'll have the deck that we're doing today, which is sort of a pre-con update, but only because it has a lot of the cards that are available in the Demir Zombie Midnight Hunt pre-con. Undead Unleashed, Yes, if you will. and then we'll have Chris's actual deck that he plays that uh, that he submitted before this deck because he wanted to share it with us. Yeah. But then he resubmitted it because he thought that it would be good for, for newer players or Midnight Hunt to kind of get the cards out there and talk about Midnight Hunt stuff. Dang. Yeah. Put people are thought into this. People are looking after us. <laughs> Very <laughs> excellent. We appreciate you. Okay, so let's get to the cards. Let's do it. All right, Ryan. Now, for simplicity's sake, do you want to start with the custom categories or do we want to bang out the cards that come in the pre-con and just get them out of the way. Let's, well, you know what? I failed to mention something. Here's the thing. Okay. This episode, if you're listening to it on the day it comes out, uh-huh. is actually 10-5. Uh-huh. And this deck does not play a Binding Grasp or a Mortar Pod or something that gives plus zero plus one. <laughs> <laughs> so we're a day behind, 10-4 day, but uh, just so everybody knows. But we, people get it. There's you know? equipments and enchantments that give plus zero plus one. Okay, so we, that we could play, but we're just, we're just not yet. Yes. Maybe in the suggestions section. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I think that we should take a quick look at the cards that are included in this list that are also from the Undead Unleashed pre-con. All right, we're going to hit those fairly quickly and... Just then we'll get on to the the meat and potatoes. Yeah, I I suppose because 
a lot of them are zombie cards. The the commander of that deck is Wilhelt the Rot Cleaver. Give Who, that guy a read. He is a 3-3 three, three zombie warrior for Demir and 2. Whenever another zombie you control dies, if it didn't have decayed, create a shit zombie, which is a 2-2 two, two black zombie with decayed. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a zombie if you do draw a card. Oh. So he's pretty good. So he's a, he's a card drawer when your guys die. Yep. And a token maker. Yep. And you sacrifice stuff. Well, and... he his when they die during your end step. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you get an extra card draw during your turn. Yeah, it's like thing. shitty monarch that can't be stolen from you. In your command zone. In your command zone. Well, which, which makes it, like, pretty good. Yeah, but it's not in this command zone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. He's just, he's just in the thing. So he's here. We also have a zombie apocalypse. Yep, that destroys all humans and gets you all zombies back from your G yard. Including undead auger. Yep, that's a when it when it dies, you lose a life draw card. It or another creature you control dies, you lose a life draw card. That's actually a Lord of Tressorhorn staple yep. because you have to sacrifice your own shit when Lord of Tressorhorn ETBs. Yeah. I play that in my deck. We've got a Talisman of Dominance and a Sol Ring. Yep. A Rooftop Storm. A Rooftop Storm lets you cast zombies for free. That's pretty good. Can you cast them from anywhere for free? Yes. Ooh, you can just pay zero rather than pay the actual mana cost for zombie creature spells you cast. Yeah. So you could cast Lord of Tressorhorn over and over and over from your command zone. For free. If you sacrifice him when he ETBs. So you could get infinite ETBs from your commander with that card. So you could get infinite losing life. Ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, how about Ravenous Rotbelly? Ravenous Rotbelly, brand spanking new from oh the from the precon that this is in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a zombie for five mana, four or five. I was gonna put this in my in my not in a Strad Midnight Hunt review, but it didn't make the cut. When it ETBs, you sacrifice up to three zombies. When you sacrifice one or more zombies this way, each opponent sacrifices that many creatures. So it's like super, what's the zombie? Um, ETBs, everybody sack a creature? Dimebag Marauder. Yes. Coin Purse. Coin Marauder. Purse Marauder. Yeah, Flesh Bag Marauder. There it is. <laughs> there it is. We yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. This is like super him. Cool. Because you, you could do three. That's actually a cool card. That's a neat card. That's a, that's a gooder. And crazy picture too. Yes. We're going to open the graves. Ooh, that is, is that new as well? I don't think so. I, I think, don't think so. That's five mana. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, which is... Lots already we've established. Mm -hmm. You create a 2-2 two, two black zombie. So you know that that's not new because it's not a shitty zombie. It's just a zombie. Yes. Then we've got Midnight Reaper. That is whenever a non-token creature control dies, Midnight Reaper deals one damage to you and draw a card. That's another one that, that I play in my Lord of Tressorhorn deck because I want to sacrifice my own creature. Good call. Yes. Lord of the Accursed. Oh, yeah. We're playing multiple lords, but there can only be one <laughs> because it's Highlander. You get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Other yeah, zombies yeah. get plus one, plus one, and all zombies gain menace until end of turn. You know, Horde Wing Scab. You what in the actual? Other zombies you control have flying, which is cool and funny and terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> zombies <laughs> just that fly. Dripping body parts on you. Gross. <laughs> And it flies. It's a 3-3 three, three for 5. Whenever one or more zombies you control deal combat damage to one or more of your opponents, you may draw a card equal to the number of opponents that were dealt damage this way. So attack three different opponents with zombies that fly and draw three cards. And then discard three cards. Don't care. Because it's it, that's the thing. It's gotta go, we got to go for the throat and a flesh bag marauder. We yep. talked about him already. Endless ranks of the dead. Yeah, which is... Uh, Don't play this card. A pretty slow card, yeah. Excellent, yeah. excellent foil. Yes. Yes, during each of your upkeeps, you double the amount of zombies. You get a zombie token for each zombie you control. Or something like that. Mm -mm, you get equal to half the zombies you control rounded down. This card... It's, too slow? It's too no, slow. No good, right? It's no good. Just cut it, play... Mortar pod, so you can else. make your guy a 10-5. <laughs> or Brash Taunter, because then you have a Brash Taunter. Both good. Yes. Distant Melody. Ooh, yeah, this is choose a creature type, zombie, draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. Sick. Yes. Diagraph Colossus. Yeah, zombie. This is a good one. This is a gooder. Enters the battlefield with plus one, plus one counter on it for each zombie in your yard, in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. So big. Big already for three mana. Whenever you cast a zombie spell, create a tapped 2-2 two -two black zombie creature. 
That's pretty cool. I like that card. Yes. I like the and picture. I like everything about when that When you cast Lord of Tressorhorn over and over and over again, you just get this guy. Huge. And lots yeah. of zombie tokens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Neat. Pretty cool. Diagraph Captain. That's a zombie pumper. And whenever a zombie dies, target opponent loses one life. So it's kind of like aristocratic. Sure. Yeah. Death Baron. That's a zombie lord as well. Zombies, skeleton, <laughs> skeletons get plus one, plus one, and have death touch. Corpse Augur. Oh, I play this one in mine too. When it dies, you draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of creatures in target player's graveyard. That's a cool card. Yes. It's a neat, and it's a 4-2. Makes it easy for you to get it killed, but also it can get in there for some significant beats. Yes. Yeah, because it's going to kill whatever blocks it, so people don't block it lots of the time, and it's going to chunk off damage. And when it dies, you're going to draw, like, five. Five cards usually is what I draw off of that. You lose five, but I don't care because I've already done eight or 12 damage with it. Yeah, pretty good. Cool. We got a Commander's Sphere. We all sure. know that one. We got an Arcane Signet, too. That's, uh, those are the mana rocks. Yeah. Uh, Cleaver Scab. Cleaver Scab. That is so dirty sounding. But yeah. this is a new one, too. Cool picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got two heads and stuff. This is a two, four for four, three tap Saka Zombie. Create two tokens that are copies of the sacrifice creature. That's cool, man. Yeah. I like that yep. a lot. He's going to cleave it right in half, then you're going to have two of them. So you chop like your corpse auger in half, or you chop one of your zombie lords in half. Oh, yeah. I like one of your card drawing guys in half. Those right? are all good. Those are, that's cool, man. Uh, Cemetery Reaper. That's another lord, and you can get a zombie token by X lying something from your graveyard. And the last one is Army of the Damned or Army of Darkness. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, I see what you see, did there. I made a reference back to the movie that we're going to get into here in a couple of minutes. Eight mana, get 13 tapped zombies, flashback for 10, get 13 more. Have you ever untapped with those zombies? <sighs> I have never untapped with those zombies. I've ever. seen it happen once. I've seen it happen. I've seen it. I but I've you. never done it. Yeah, I've never <laughs> been able to do it. I remember one time I played it and I flashed it back on the same turn. I'm like, ah, this is gonna be fucking good. And I'm know, gonna be the winner. You know what I? You know what? You know what? Got played the next turn. Wrath of God. No. What? T try again, Ryan. Insurrection. What's the very worst sweeper that could happen to a board with twenty six two twos on it? Uh, repercussion and blasphemous act. How about massacre worm? Oh <laughs> yeah. I'll do it because that was a bad day for me so you lost like uh 40 some life yeah, yeah. dang I, it was more than i had and i did not oh but at least i got to play in flashback army of the damned yes on the same that's cool but anyway so okay. that's all the pre-con cards you go out you buy undead unleashed you're more than halfway to the deck because you still got to put some lands in it yeah here's the thing too the the mtggoldfish.com has got like the what the deck costs sure or what the value of the deck is right, right now it's sitting at like 65 freedom dollars so that's like 177 canadian dollars yeah but if you go to fusiongamingonline.com and you just buy the pre-con it's like 50 bucks canadian now you got to be in canada to get sealed product but lots of people in the nation are canadian so if you yeah. go there you can order it and you get it and you save five percent yeah man hey and and shout out shout out to of course people in the land of the free people in canada but other nations within the nation, YouTube, YouTube tells me, uh -huh. people from the UK. Oh, cool. People from Germany. Uh, I don't know how to say cool in German. Uh, people from Australia. Oi, cool. <laughs> <laughs> people from Australia. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, all, all the, currently the top four or five nations in the nation. Oh, cool. Yeah, super neat. That's fun. So. We're worldwide. I, I guess so. Yeah, welcome. Now, I, we've, we've got custom categories, of course, that all have names. And there's one or two cards in the custom category. So Brando's going to do his best to relate it to the movie. Joe's mm -hmm. going to do his best to give us a picture from the movie. If, if he can find them or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm going to do my best to tell you about Lord of Tressorhorn dot deck. Okay. And I want to start with the category Evil Ash. Evil Ash is two Lord of Tressorhorn staples. He's got 10 power. So how do you get an instant win? You do Tainted Strike or Phyresis, which give him Infect. Yeah, that'll do it. And then you just off somebody. Yeah. So those are pretty classics. I don't know what Evil Ash means because I thought he was a good guy, but... Okay, Evil Ash. 
he's when Ash is on his quest to recover the Necronomicon after he's been sent back in time, he ends up at a giant, like a, not a giant windmill. It's a windmill, and then like a bunch of clones of himself come, and he eats one of them, and then that one like gestates inside of his stomach and infects him with evil, and then like an eyeball grows in his shoulder, and then a an evil version of himself grows out of his shoulder, and then he fights him and kills him and buries him in the ground. Oh. And then Evil Ash rises up and, like, leads the army of deadites against the castle and, like, the big final fight scenes between Ash and Evil Ash. Oh. I want this to be, like, a real movie. Like It is. I, I want them to do, like, I have to see this movie. It is a real movie. It's very, <laughs> I have to see this. Actually, my very... And this is, it's kind of dumb, but it's my very, 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 very favorite part of the movies. The, my favorite line from the shows is after Evil Ash has been killed and dismembered. Like he cuts his arms and legs off with a chainsaw and buries him in this hole. And he's like, you'll never get the book. You'll die, you piece of shit. And then Ash <laughs> is like, hey, you have something on your face. And he looks kind of cross-side down on his face. And then Ash just throws some dirt on him. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Because it's such like a, I don't know, I, it makes me laugh every time. Nice. So nice. Well, you mentioned the Necronomicon. I did. And we've got a sign in blood here, which has a book on, <laughs> on it. <laughs> sign, uh, sign in blood. The Necronomicon is also written in blood on preserved human skin. Oh. Yeah. Well, we've got the Book of Vile Darkness in this deck as well, which yeah. represents the Necronomicon. And I, I'm actually working on a, a, a Lord of the Rings themed altar commission. Mm -hmm. that has the Book of Vile Darkness. It's the only one I'm not done yet, but I'll, I'll send the pictures of the ones I am done to Joe because the rest of them are the rest of the Vecna pieces. Cool. Maybe Joe will put them up on the screen for us. But the Book of Vile Darkness is an, a legendary art artifact for black, black, black. At the beginning of your end step, if you lost two or more life this turn, and we will because mm -hmm. we cast Lord of Tressorhorn, or we'll have creatures die and we'll lose life, we create a 2-2 two, two black zombie. Lose two life, make a zombie. Yeah. Got it. Also, tap Exile Book of Vile Darkness and artifacts you control named Eye of Vecna and Hand of Vecna, which we're playing, create Vecna, a legendary 8-8 black zombie god creature token with indestructible. It gains all triggered abilities of the exiled cards. Neat. And the the exiled cards being the, the Eye of Vecna and the Hand of Vecna. Both of which we're playing. Yes, the eye is a two-drop artifact that its triggered ability is when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose two life. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay two life. If you do, draw a card and lose two life. And it represents sweet Henrietta's eye. I think Henrietta was just like a like one of the like a, a chambermaid in the castle, I think. Sure. Or she might have been the love interest's like handmaiden or whatever. She end, end, ends up getting killed, turned into a zombie. But yeah. But yeah, she's, she's the eye. I All think right. I don't know if she gets her eye poked out, but probably. And then the hand of Vecta, legendary artifact equipment, three drop. At the beginning of combat on your turn, equip creature or a creature you control named Vecta gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of cards in your hand. And you can equip it for two or you can equip it to by paying one life for each card in your hand. So you can make this like super Vecna 8-8 with all these abilities where you draw cards and lose life and it gets big and it's it's it all, zombies, it's, it's all yeah. good. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Okay. In the deck, Ash's possessed hand, like I said right at the beginning of the show, the the evil that was in the woods gets into Ash's body and it goes into his hand and it like turns it all black and cracky and weird. So Ash, as I as I quote, cuts it off at the wrist. Like cut it off at the pass, and he uses a chainsaw to cut his own hand off. Ugh. And then his hand comes to life, and it like beats the shit out of him, and runs around, and it's in the walls, <laughs> and it's it's really good. It's it's very funny. Okay, okay. You know what he replaces the uh, hand with? Oh, is it a chainsaw? It is a chainsaw. <laughs> so instead of being like a pirate with a hook hand, he has a chainsaw hand, and representing the chainsaw hand is Kasari Gamma. Kasari Gamma, the Equipment from Champions of Kamigawa. That one? That's the one. Oh, everybody knows what that is, but I'll read it anyways. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is a three-drop equipment. Equips for three. The equipped creature has two. This creature gets plus one, plus oh until end of turn, so it's like... Artifact breathing. Yes, like fire breathing, but for artifacts. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a blocking creature, 
Kusari Gamma deals that much damage to each other creature defending player controls. I don't know why more people, including us, don't play this card. That's actually good in Lord of Tressorhorn because whenever something blocks, it's just going to 10 all of that player's creatures. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's really... I'm going to get me one of those. I'll put that in a deck. Pretty dang ass good. Okay, let's do some more single card categories. Let's do Linda Locket Necklace. That's imprisoned in the moon. That, that's her... That's a removal spell. It's an enchantment that turns a permanent into a colorless land. Not a waste, mind you, but a colorless land. Oh, okay. I got that put on my Hypatra the other day, and I wasteland my own Hypatra to get it off. Nice. <laughs> anyway, that's Linda's locket necklace. I believe Linda was Ash's girlfriend in Evil Dead, and he gives her the necklace because that's who they are. Sure. Sure. I hope nobody heard my phone vibrate just now, but... Uh, they probably did. Let's move on. Hail to the King is our next category. This is Marchesa's Decree. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch, of course. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker, you control that creature's controller loses one life. Neat. Yes. I mean, I that's exactly what... The, Hail to the King, baby, is like Ash's catchphrase. And oh, okay. You're hailing the king when you attack. You're like paying the tithe. You're... I get you. Yeah, it's okay. It's pretty good. What about Wool Blanket? Wool Blanket is a blanket given to Ash when he sets off on his quest by the... I keep wanting to call her Maid Marian, but that's not who it is. But oh. it's like the love interest in the movie. And he's like, thanks, I could use a horse blanket because he's a dick. And then <laughs> she's like, it's a cloak, you fucking guy. And it's... It's pretty good. It's blue. It's very nice. Very well made. This is Whisper Silk Cloak. Hell yeah. It makes your guy shroud and unblockable. So good. <laughs> so you just hit somebody for 10. Now we're already talking about 10 and somebody. Now you 10 him even more. Yes. Okay, moving on though. Moving on. We've got some we've got some groovy draw. What what is groovy? What is the significance of that word? That's just something Ash says. Groovy. Oh, okay. Well, like every time he, he puts a mechanical hand on his hand, groovy. Puts a chainsaw on his arm, groovy. <laughs> Okay, well, we've got a Siphon Mind and a Diabolic Intent. A Diabolic Intent is actually sack a creature to tutor something, mm -hmm. and Siphon Mind is just a card draw spell. Yeah, so well, everybody, those, those everybody discards a card. You draw a card for each card discarded this way. It's a very good draw card. Yep. We've got a couple artifacts that don't seem to belong, and we should have read them when we were reading all of the other things in the in the like the like other mana rocks, but we've got a Rakdos Signet, Pristine Talisman. Is it Signet? Sure, those are They're rocks. fine. They're yeah. And there's, I, I think this is another catchphrase. I, I think it's called, come get some. Yeah. Who wants to have a little? You? Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all, he's like calling on everybody in the castle. He's like, who wants some? Who's next? And they're all like afraid of him or whatever. And he just points at this fat. He's like, you. And he's like, what? 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 <laughs> are people going to know exactly the part of the movie oh, you're talking about? Absolutely they are. They're oh, even man. picturing the guy. He's like this big, like kind of Jack, kind of fat, bald guy. Oh, I, wait, you know he's what? He's got a hammer. He's like a blacksmith. I got this. I got this. Comment on YouTube with your favorite part of, oh, of Evil Dead hell movie yeah. legendarium. <laughs> yes. We've got Come Get Some. That's leadership vacuum that bounces a commander to a player's hand and draws you a card. Yeah. And we've got a Rakdos charm which exiles all cards from target player's graveyard or destroys an artifact or each creature deals one damage to its controller that's a surprisingly versatile and strong ass card that's a good one okay moving on okay moving on because we're there's a lot of categories <laughs> let's do some deadites those are the zombies they don't they must not call them zombies in the movie they call them deadites yeah they're good they're all kinds of stuff there's like Flying wing things, and there's skeletons, and there's zombies, and there's goblins. There's all kinds of stuff. Oh, okay. And all so, called deadites. We've got a grave crawler, classic with 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 Lord of Tressorhorn. Well, and rooftop storm. Oh yeah, because you can just cast them from your graveyard infinitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, crypt breaker. That's a gooder. Discard a card to get a zombie. Tap three untapped zombies you control. Draw a card and lose a life. Mm -hmm. That's a gooder. We've got Hanweir Garrison. This one I think that you play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, w it, w give that a read. It's a two three for red two human soldier, but we'll forgive that. Whenever it attacks, you get two one one red human creatures tapped and attacking. Not much of a deadite, but it does create a little army for you as it attacks. So, yes. so it makes sense. And we are playing the hand we're battlements, which then it would flip over into it, into the. It's like a 
the writhing town, Hanweir the writhing township. Yeah, it's like and a, that looks like a deadite. It does. It's a big, big that makes big bigs when it swings. It's cool. Yes, Liliana's standard bearer, another Lord of Tresserhorn classic. Flash three one for three enters the battlefield. Draw X, where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. It's a good card. That's a gooder. Yeah, it's a good ass card. Yep. Nightscape familiar, another. Lord of Tressorhorn special mm-hmm. makes your your Grix's colored spells cost less and regenerates and is a zombie. Very handy. Good luck trying to find a foil of that. <laughs> and a zombie trailblazer, one that I don't play. Black, black, black two. Tap an untapped zombie you control. Target lands becomes a swamp until end of turn. Tap an untapped zombie you control. Target creature gains swamp walk until end of turn. Swamp walk is is good. Yes, it is good. And and we could play a a Urborg tomb to Yogmoth and just make. With this, make Lord of Tressorhorn unblockable because everything would be a swamp. Are we playing Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth? I don't see it in the land section. Well, there's an upgrade. There it is. We're upgrading. Okay, let's do some quick hits on these on these custom categories. I got this. Okay. Mounted deer. That's burnished heart. That's a mana dork. What is what is the significance? There was a mounted deer head on the wall in the cabin. It also gets taken over and it's like rah, 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 tries to eat <laughs> of ash. Of course it does. Okay. Cabin in the woods. That's pretty pretty self explanatory. That's that, where they go. That's where this they go. Is witch's clinic. It's a it's a land that says target commander gains lifelink until end of turn. Cool. That's a gooder, yeah. That's a good card. What about Sword Boy? That it's literally Sword Boy. And he walks over, and Arthur takes the sword, like, but he doesn't just draw it out of its scabbard. He, like, grabs the sword and kicks the kid, and the kid, like, rolls away, and the sword comes out of its sheath while he's fallen down. It's very fun. Yep. Sword Boy is Trophy Mage. ETBs searches for a three drop artifact, which could be a, a Whisper Silk Cloak or a Kusari, Kusari Gamma. Gamma or. One of our boom boom sticks. Boom sticks. That's his shotgun. Yes. In this case, fire shrieker. Equip creature gets double strike. Oh yeah, baby. Costs three, so trophy boy, trophy sword boy, yeah, can get it. The other boom stick, Lord of Tressorhorn special, uh-huh. Chander's ignition. Equip once you combine that with Lord of Tressorhorn having infect, that wins you the game. Yes, give him infect, and then he does ten damage to each creature and each opponent. Very good. Yes. Usually this is a, a board wipe more often because it's hard to get all three of the cards, but 10 damage to each opponent and each creature are usually pretty good. Pretty solid for five mana. And yeah. obviously we've got all those dice triggers. We're going to draw a whole bunch of cards. Uh-huh. Yeah. Very cool. Uh-huh. I think, okay. Oh, we got Merlin. Merlin is a character yep. in, in the movie because it's like Camelot yeah, he's, that he goes back to. Yeah, he's literal wizard. He's a dreamscape artist. That's hero on legs, but it's blue. Yep. Because of course it is. Yep. And the last thing we have is Lord Arthur. He's the king of the castle that Ash goes to. He's the one that kicks the sword boy out of the way, and that's a Cavalier of Gales. I think that that's a Lord of Tressorhorn special as well. All of the Cavaliers that fit into the deck, but give this one a read. It is a 5-5 elemental knight for blue, 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 two with flying. When it comes into play, draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on the top of your library. So brainstorm. When Cavalier of Gales dies, you shuffle it into its owner's library, then scry two. I like the black Cavalier better. That's the one I play in my Lord of Tressorhorn. I like the red one better because it's the one that I play in lots of decks. Yeah, that's a good one. You actually missed a category, though. Actually, what? Uh, you missed several categories because there's more. Oh, yeah. Sheila Undead. Sheila is his uh, lady love in the thing, but she gets kidnapped by deadites and turned into a zombie, and oh. she feels bad, but she feels good. Oh, that's Ghoul's Night Out and yeah. Liliana Death's Majesty. So both of those are in here, and we've got Klaatu something something. When Ash goes to pick up the Necronomicon at the graveyard that it is stowed, he has to say the magic words Klaatu, Verata, Nikto. But he and he's like. Yeah, I got it. I remember. I know your goddamn words, all right? Is that and what he then, says? And, yeah. <laughs> and then he gets there and he forgets the last word. So it's Klaatu, Verata, <laughs> and then he tries to grab the book and that's where all the deadites come from. Oh, that's that's why it's Klaatu, Verata, and Cough is yes. what the category is named. That's so clever. <laughs> <laughs> and those are all things that make things rise from their grave as the stealing of the Necronomicon brings all the zombies oh and stuff my God. to life. And and we've got a dread return, a living death, and a victimize. All reanimation spells. Yeah. Oh, so good. Classic. So, so good. You know what? I don't even give a shit. I'm giving this honorary spice. 
Yes. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of spice in this deck. I think the last category is some Midnight Hunt upgrade cards. We got a Necrosynthesis. Okay, give that a read. Holy smokes. It's an enchantment for black one. Enchanted creature has whenever another creature dies. Put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. And when enchanted creature dies, look at the top X cards of your library where X is its power. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh, man. So Lord of Tressorhorn j- just kind of turns into like a tutor, hey? Essentially. When he yeah. dies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. They've got a Mask of Gristlebrand. That's an artifact equipment for black, black one. A crypt creature has flying and lifelink. Good with Lord of T. Whenever a crypt creature dies, you may pay X life or X is its power if you do draw X cards. Yeah. So that's going to draw you 10. And lastly, we have an Eaten Alive. It's black as an additional cost to cast this. Either sack a dude or pay black three. Uh, we're okay with sacking dudes because we'll draw a card. And it's a sorcery that exiles target creature or planeswalker. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad. Pretty cool. Yeah. So that's the deck. That's the whole deck. That is cool. That is, uh, I love I love Tresser Daddy, if you yeah. will. Yep. I do like that We've got some actually good movie references. Yeah. And that it's like a pop culture movie that that people will know. I think that we've actually, we're encouraging people to, if they haven't checked out these movies, to definitely go watch them. And two, if you know about them lots, like, go watch them again. Lots of blood and gore in the movies though, right? Not really. It's... Is it it like old enough and like B-movie enough that it's, like you can tell that it's pretty fake? Yeah, it's it's done for laughs. <laughs> okay. Like it's the, it's not a serious. Like I'm talking about guys getting their arms and legs chopped off with a chainsaw. It's all done like kind of tongue in cheek Sam Raimi for laughs. Okay, right? Like it's it's very fun. It's it's meant to be a fun movie. It's not like when the guy saws his leg off in Saw, for no. example. Oh no, 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 no! Like when I talked about the raining blood and the girl like ripping her own arm off under the jeep, <laughs> like that's like, oh, that's gross. <laughs> but like this is. It's done for, like, it's got a talking deer head in it. Oh, that's great. Right? There's little, like, there's, like, a Gulliver's Travels moment where Ash, like, is getting stuck by these, like, little versions of himself who are, like, poking him with dinner forks and shit. And when he eats that one I was telling you about, he tries to kill him in his stomach by swallowing boiling water. And it's like, ah, how about some hot chocolate? And he tries to kill It's It's funny. <laughs> it's a funny, funny movie. Okay. Okay. Let's move to strengths and weaknesses. Strengths. And weaknesses. I think I think everybody knows just by how we're talking about it that it it's a cool theme deck. Yes, it's a deck that you can definitely sit down and like every card kind of tells a bit of the story. And most people you're going to play with, like most pods you're going to be in, at least one person will have seen the movie yes. and is going to get it. And you're going to be able to get some yucks out of it. That and way. Y- and you know what the thing is is in the actual deck. Like uh, Chris's actual deck, when you look at it, it's got way more zombies. It's more zombie tribal than Undead Unleashed Precon Upgrade. Right. So there's actual good zombies in it, and I bet you there's even more movie references in in the actual deck. So super cool theme deck is is definitely a strength. It's one of my favorite commanders. Decks like this usually are are you make concessions for the theme, which I don't mm-hmm. want to make into a weakness yet. But you're in really good colors, the three best colors. Oh, maybe. Yeah. maybe well, no, green's not in yeah, the there. Yeah, there's no green. But Grixis is a very good color combination to build yes. an EDH deck out of. So if you build a theme deck and you found that it's just not powerful enough and is too sucky, you're in fine colors to be able to upgrade it. Yeah. And and probably not have to make too many concessions. And this deck is going to slap, too. Like, it's, it's a good deck. Speaking from experience, Lord of Tressorhorn, like... It only takes one tainted strike to make people's hair stand on end, right? Yeah. And and then everybody else is like, oh, God, we have to deal with that. Yeah. Right? And this one's got combos in it with, with, like, you could draw your whole deck with Gravecrawler and a creature dying and casting it again for free. Like, so... It's all here. It's, it, yeah, it's all there, there it and it, it does it all without sacrificing flavor, which I think is a strength. I, I would have to agree. Yeah. Moving over to the weaknesses... Theme decks usually do have to concede some amount of power to make stuff fit, or yeah. you have to use cards that are weird or suboptimal or whatever, right? I don't know if that happened in this one. I, I don't, don't. I don't know if it did. I don't think it did. Like, there's no, there weren't any cards. Like, yeah, he had to play this because it's, yeah, but he, he, he you, you didn't. And when you look at the real version of the deck, not the precon upgrade one, it the deck is even better. Yeah. Well, newsflash, zombies are a good tribe. 
Turns out. Yeah, turns out they're one of the most numerous tribes that you could actually play. M- moving back real quick to, to strengths, it's a budget deck. Yeah. 222 bucks. if we want to move into, into the budget section. I, d- I don't know if... if like is it, that's budget, right? Oh yeah, two hundred bucks. I think so. Especially if you do the precon route and you just upgrade the precon. Yeah, lots of this shit you're gonna have anyway. Nothing is too difficult to find. I don't even know if there are any cards that are like big money. It's two hundred bucks because every card in it's a dollar. There's a couple things. There's the grave crawler is eighteen bucks, seventeen bucks. There is a Shizo Death's Storehouse, which is a land that gives you black, or you can pay black tap. Target legendary creature gains fear until end of turn, which is a very pre- strong. Pretty but... strong when you have a 10 power commander yeah. and infect in your deck. There is an unholy grotto, which is a $20, $22 card. You can pay black and tap it to put a zombie from your graveyard on top of your library. And that actually is a budget version of Volrath's Stronghold. Which, which also could be in here. Which could be in here. It isn't, but that card's like 80 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a couple expensive cards, but nothing too too bad, like seven or eight bucks, which is yeah. and those just are what car- cards kind of cost. And those are cards that you'll be able to find, or if you've been playing EDH for a while, you're probably going to have them anyway. Yeah, I agree. Or easily replaceable with yeah. fucking other lands that come in the precon. Yeah. Okay. Spice calculator. How about before we get to that, we do card. card. Of the, of the week, week. 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 yes, week. Week. yes. I always don't. Um, I always don't do that. <laughs> we we forget it quite often. I think this time, just because it's fun, and I've resolved it at least once. Let's let's do the Vecna pieces. You you've resolved all of them and got a Vecna. I got a Vecna. You vecked somebody. I, I vecked. Well, I didn't have to vec them because it it came off the back of Gen waving for twenty four into a Gen wave for sixteen. Oh, so like I didn't need to. But I did. (laughs) I put the token on the board. Yes. It was there. Yes. It happened. You know what? I want to make a deck where we vec somebody and we gurk somebody. (laughs) Vec Vec gurk. We vec them and we gurk them. That would have to be a salty deck. You vec them, we gurk them. That would be the name of the deck. (laughs) Yes. Welcome to CCO Nation. You vec them, we gurk them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So go on down to... FusionGamingOnline.com. They are your source for all your gaming needs and your Vecna needs. Your Vecna and your Gurkham needs. Yes. 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 CCO Fusion 5 gets you 5% off the the whole, f- I guess Book of Vile Darkness is like four bucks, but the other two are like pennies. Yeah, they're they're jank, but I mean, they're good. They draw you cards. They make your dudes bigger. They give you dudes to make bigger. So and, Oh, and the Vecna token comes in foil. That's the one I painted. Oh, neat. Yeah. Cool. Neat. Okay. Cool. Okay, cool. Spice calculator. Spice calculator. Yeah, so we we go to edhrec.com and found that there's a lot of zombie tribal, a lot of double strike enablers. Well, that makes sense. Which is good, yeah, because you give Lord of Tressorhorn plus one plus who cares, and, and he becomes 11. You give him double strike, he'll hit for 22. And that's, as we all know, enough. Yes, and he's a zombie, and you got zombie lords, so it's easy to give him plus one. That's the other kind of route that people take other than infect. Right. So both powerful strategies. We see a lot of that on EDHREC.com. I wanted to mention it because the uniqueness rating cards in our deck that are different than the stock list, only 23, okay. which gives us a spice calculator of... 41 spice but it definitely gets extra spice for being such a cool theme deck yes i already proclaimed even before we did the calculation that this will get honorary spices yeah this is a spicy deck just again based on the story and the reason for some of the includes even if those includes are cards that you would normally see included in a lord of tressor horn deck which is a commander that he doesn't tell you how to build them but he gives you a pretty decent Here's what I want to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know what? Like, here's the thing on EDH Rec, 20th among Grixis commanders, Grixie, if you're French, puts him, ignoring the stupid partner pairs, that puts him right below Curse Lady. Which is brand new. Yeah, who came out like 10 minutes ago and right above Croesus the Purger. And, which, <laughs> and that's a card, I don't even know what it does. <laughs> it's from Invasion. Which is like 20 years old at this, 21 years old at this point. Lord of Tressorhorn, only 205 decks. And, and again, makes sense, because there's only so many different ways that you're going to build them. I suppose, yeah. And you know what? Like, Zombie Tribal is a way. 
Voltron is away. Mine is kind of dies tribal. <laughs> yeah, die trigger tribal, which features a lot of zombies because that's where a lot of those die triggers come from. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the enablers for them are zombies. It's just, it's, it doesn't make the deck not spicy. It just is something you got to do to make the deck work. Yeah, that's right. I like the deck. Big thanks to Chris for sending it in. Big thanks for introducing me, reacquainting me with something that I only knew on the fringes ah. but now i'm interested in <laughs> <laughs> which which would be the evil dead army of darkness whole thing oh man we're gonna come back next week and you'll have watched a movie y- maybe oh. well baseball season's not quite over yet but so. it's spooky season man you gotta watch at least one scary movie and you might as well watch this one because you can watch it with the kids <laughs> <laughs> i suppose yeah okay so here's the thing we asked for a couple things we did we asked for your favorite quote line part of the movies that we're talking about yeah. in the comments on YouTube we asked for CCO Nation as a whole to send their spooky decks in yeah and and not all black decks you you don't need to be black to be spooky especially if it's like a theme deck like this which was a lot of fun yeah send them in commandercookout at gmail.com or on any of the deckless channels in the patreon discord the points if you if there's like an actual spider tribal deck that isn't just every single spider in magic in it yeah i, think, I would like to see that but i think spider tribal exists at this point there's a couple yeah. different commandies for it yeah so if you got one of those because spiders are scary everybody's afraid of spiders yeah or maybe some kind of ghost deck oh yeah ghosts would be good ghosts are spooky and uh, ghost spirits are yeah. white and blue mostly if you have something that's centered around like jason Voorhees, or i think we did one of those last year actually a jason Voorhees deck did we i think we might have oh man yeah Link to our own deck list in the comments. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, If you remember, we did a spooky one. I'd like to make a a spooky theme or a Halloween. I know we've done Halloween stuff before, and I know that we do Christmas stuff every year. I want want to do something fun like this every year to get people in the season. And a lot of people get like seasonal depression when it starts to get cold and shitty out. Lots of people really love Halloween. We want to make it uh, kind of a feel good vibe when you tune in yeah also put a pumpkin in the deck also yes they just printed a pumpkin yes so get it in or if it makes a human token because the new human token he's holding a pumpkin yo yeah that's all good stuff how about how about scarecrows scarecrows are a little bit spooky that'd be good but we already know that deck what about yeah we do what about like a children of the corn deck where it's all yeah it's all like fields and and fences and spooky stuff and like kids or references to songs by corn (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. That would be funny too. Oh man, see, there's there's so many different ways to be creative. This is great. The deck we got today is great, but it's it's a very on the nose theme deck. Yeah. Versus like any of the shit that we just made up <laughs> off the top of our head. Yes. So send it in. CCO Podcast on Twitter, CCO Brando, commandercookout at gmail.com. If you're a patron, get on the Discord. Maybe everybody can do like a group spooky brew on 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 the Discord. Oh, that'd be fun. Which would be totally fun. Yeah. And and here's the other thing too. Now that uh, all of my yard work and stuff is winding down, I want to jump on Zoom or something that I can get like a virtual hangout with some of the some of the members of the Nash. Eh? Maybe we can do like a virtual deck brew or something. Oh, that'd be fun. That would be super fun. We could eat candy and drink beer. Oh, and do magic stuff, even though I can't really do spell table because my internet's sucky. Well, that's whatever. You can do something else. We could build decks. Yeah. Just as fun. Yeah. Drink beer. Also fun. Yes. Yes, but we're going to get more of that out on our socials. You can follow us anywhere you follow anybody on social media, anywhere that you find the show. Thank you for listening to the show. And watching it. And watching it for all the hard work that Joe did, which we really appreciate him for in advance. Big thanks to Chris Coinpurse for sending the deck in. I had a great time talking about it. I know Ryan did. I hope you all had a great time listening to it because we are going to be back next week with another super terrifying deck on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Hail to the king, baby. <laughs>